begin designing my shoes that are for my character or celebrity um, inspiration. And so I have my plan sheet here and I made my list of people. I circled my favorite ones. So I'm doing Vincent Van Gogh, who is a post-impressionist artist. So like 1800s is his time period. He's an artist, he was a painter. He painted a lot of paintings. He uses a lot of paint, real thick paint, a lot of swirls. And so I designed all my different variety of shoes that I thought he might wear. And I included designs that I'm familiar with from his paintings. Um, and then I put a paintbrush because he's a painter. So like this is from his painting Starry Night. This is also, he has these like really whimsical trees, sunflowers, so I include that. And I created two different sketches down here and I'm gonna pick my favorite and I am going to begin sketching. Now, we learned some sketching techniques. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some structure lines that I'm gonna kind of place out, map out how wide I want this shoe to be. So that way I don't just start drawing every little detail and end up with a shoe that's only this big. So I'm giving myself guidelines here and I'm doing it very lightly because I know I'm gonna erase it. And so I'm gonna map out like where the top of my shoe is when it's gonna start coming down, and then where the top of the shoe is gonna hit, and this will be roughly the bottom. So I'm giving myself structural guidelines. From there, I'm gonna start sketching. So loose lines that are light, so if I make a mistake, I can erase. Now we all have different techniques we like to do when we draw. You obviously might draw a little different than me. Maybe you like to do just a really clean contour sketch, but I do all these little nice light sketch marks until I get what I want. And the beauty of drawing light is I can really adjust things easily. I'm not worried about, oh no, I made a mistake. How am I gonna fix this? It's all right, I'm drawing so very light, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now that I have like a rough sketch, I'm gonna clean up some of the marks I know I'm not gonna need anymore. Okay, so now that I have the basic outline of my shoe, again, notice how light this is. I am going to start incorporating like all the designs. So all of the little symbols and um, pictures that I made here, I'm gonna start designing it out. And again, I'm following my sketches. So I don't really have to do much thinking now because the thinking has already been done for me earlier when I sketched all those designs. So this is just placing it out on the paper and making sure it looks right. This section, I wanted to make some paint brushes. And again, I'm drawing light here. Always, always, always draw light. Now that I have the shoe sketched out and it's what I want it to be, I've opened my jar of ink I'm gonna use my dip pen here. I'm gonna dip it into the ink and I am going to outline it. So you wanna think of this as like if you're gonna outline the piece with Sharpie, except we're using ink here. So just have nice control. We practiced this in the classroom before starting, so you should have some experience with the ink. I'm letting the ink pen here naturally kind of do its thing. So I, especially like here on my fun little swirls, some are gonna be a little thinner and some are gonna pick up the thickness depending on the direction of how I'm moving. And I kind of like that look, it's, it's pretty to me. So um, don't try to force this to become something it's not. Like allow the ink to do its job. All right, so I'm looking at my design here and I need to thicken up some of the lines. So I'm gonna go back and press directly down with my nib pen here to get a thicker bead of ink to come out. If you run into a problem where the ink splatters, sometimes that can be a cool effect. So I wouldn't be too worried if you run into a little mistake. Like let that just become part of the style of your piece. Obviously, if it's a huge issue, we can fix it, but just try to have as much control as you can and embrace any sort of 
interesting marks that come about. So now that I have my piece drawn, I want you to think about all of the shading techniques we learned. So we learned stippling, we learned hatching, cross hatching, cross contour, doodles. I think that was most of them. So now you are going to use um, a shading technique and incorporate that into your design. And I'm going to use the ink. So I'm going to pick doodles for mine or scumbling or scribbling, whatever you want to call it. And remember, the tighter you make these, the darker it will appear. The reason I chose doodles is just because Van Gogh has a lot of swirls and curves in his work, and so this also has a lot of swirl and curve, so I thought it kind of made sense. Now, you don't have to use the same one the whole time, necessarily, if you need, like, maybe over here, if you want to move into, like, a hatch or cross hatch, that's fine, too. You can incorporate multiple ways to shade in, or you can keep it unified and do the same way the whole time. Now mine is actually, because these doodles are so interesting to look at, it actually is appearing as part of the design of the shoe, and I kind of like that. But I'm trying to just find like where shadows might be, and that's where I'm putting in these marks. So you might want to look up a picture of a shoe or look at someone's shoe in the room, look at your own shoe, and see where light is hitting it, where shadow is hitting it. And I'm going over some of my design directly because if I'm thinking this is shadow, then it's shadow's going to hit any part of the shoe. It doesn't matter where the designs are necessarily, but I'm not going to go too overboard because I still want the designs to shine through. So here is my shoe. I finished all the doodles. I'm pretty proud of it. I like the way it looks. I also made another one just to show you for reference. This one's slightly different. Still Vincent Van Gogh inspired. Uh, changed up the designs a little bit and I used just hatching marks for the shadows. So these are, you can tell that these um, create a totally different feel and style than the doodles did. So it really does matter what style you choose and how you want it to look at the end. Okay, so next step is we are going to use watercolor paints to add color to these awesome shoe drawings. I'm going to begin here thinking about color. And so I have these worksheets here. Well, not worksheets. They're really just information on color schemes and what color schemes you can use for your shoe. And this is review. This is information we should know. So remember, complementary or like opposites, they look good together. Analogous colors or neighbors on the color wheel, they look good together. Monochromatic, whatever you want. So I would take a look at your design and like how many sections do you have? How many colors do you think you're going to need? And then decide upon a color scheme. Now, I just have my sketch paper right here, so I am going to pick my color scheme, and I think I am going to do um, split complementary. And I'm going to use the color blue, the color violet, and then the color yellow orange. So those are my main colors. Now, because I wrote that down on my little plan, I don't need to think about it anymore. I have it right there. You guys know I like a good plan. And I'm going to paint this in. So brush choices, anything with soft hair. I like these rounded green brushes or these flat red brushes for watercolor. And watercolor comes to us in the tray. And it is asleep until we put water in it to wake it up. So you have to get your paintbrush wet. So you will need a bucket of water and your palette. So again, I'm doing blue, violet, and yellow, orange. Now this palette here is my, like more of my tertiary colors. So those are my yellow, oranges, red, violets, blue, violets, blue, greens. So yellow, orange is right here. So I'm going to start with this palette, yellow, orange. Now with watercolor paint, you have to be in control of how much water you put on that brush. If it's too much water, it will become too puddly. And this right here, my friends, is too puddly. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna dry off my brush and I'm gonna soak up some of that water before it spreads outside of the lines. And I can let that dry 
And if I want this to be brighter, I can just go back on with another layer. The more water you have on your brush, the lighter the paint will appear. The less water you have on your brush, more paint, the darker the paint will appear. Now, if you look at what I'm doing here, I am using the tippy toe of my brush because for this shape, this moon, I don't want to get outside the lines. I'm really trying my best to stay in the lines. So you can have nice control with watercolor paints as long as you don't, like I said, have too much water on there. So if you look here on this flower, notice how it is a paler version of an orange. It's because I have more water on my brush where this is a lot more vibrant. But it's the same orange. I'm painting with the same color. As with any time we paint, treat your brush nicely. And again, if you get outside the lines, well, you take that as an opportunity to adjust the design of the piece. Make it work. Problem solve. So I'm sticking with, um, because I know I have multiple areas I want to use this orangey, yellow orangey color. I'm just going to do all the areas of this color before I switch to a different color. When you have to get into tiny, tiny spaces, you need to show the utmost control over your paintbrush. Don't let it get sloppy. example so I am going to focus a little bit more here on a neutral color palette so this one isn't necessarily tied into the color wheel but neutral colors are going to be um, like grays and tans and browns and I'm going to use a variety of those for my color choices for this painting where this one beforehand is a little more vibrant colors from the color wheel this one is all the neutrals and I'm going to actually do a little color mixing with my watercolors. So like what I'm doing now is I'm taking a little bit of brown and a teensy little bit of black. And I'm just, I'm mixing right here on my watercolor tray. You can mix on a sheet of paper or a separate mixing palette. But this is what I'm choosing to do. And I'm keeping it pretty faint and light for this version just so I can see my lines a little better. I just want to demonstrate multiple techniques and you kind of decide what artist you want to be and how you want to incorporate color into your drawings. I'm just letting a little bit of yellow fade into some of this bluey, gray, black color. And you can tell this yellow is not very vibrant. I'm actually mixing it a little bit with the the gray blue. Alrighty, so here is my painting. I think I'm complete here. Notice how I kept it in the neutral color families. So every color that I used, I mixed with a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. So you can see I have a little bit of violet kind of tones in there, um, blues and yellows. So that's more neutral, and then again, here is the more vibrant version using just more pure color straight from the tray of watercolor. But this is our shoe design paintings and drawings. We incorporated both techniques. Now if you get any um, like little splatter marks on the outside, you can um, paint the background if you would like to paint the background. 